did you know that more than two-thirds of the earth is covered by water? So you can imagine what a huge role this plays in maintaining the ecological health of our planet. Welcome to our European African environmental magazine, Eco Africa. I am Sandra Trinobrio coming to you from Kampala here in Uganda. And a big hello to my fellow presenter, NT in Nigeria. Hello everyone and hello Sandra. You are so right about our waters. In fact, you could go so far as to say that the future of our planet may depend on the conditions of our oceans, lakes, and rivers. We'll have more on that in the coming reports. But first, a brief look at what's lined up today in our program. Seychelles has a rescue plan for its coastal areas. We'll take a look at how that works. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has just presented its report on the condition of our oceans. We'll see what it says. And in Germany, and other parts of Europe you can go kayaking for free as long as you collect trash along the way. First to the Seychelles where environmentalists are working to protect coral reefs. These fragile ecosystems are amongst the most species rich biotopes on earth and the island nation relies on them for its very survival. An initiative launched in 2014 aims to support a healthy ocean and implement climate change strategies and to promote the stable blue economy and the region depends on. With its 115 islands, the archipelago is a truly unique marine ecosystem. The Seychelles is a tropical paradise. The archipelago covers around 455 square kilometers of land but more than 1.3 million square kilometers of sea. We depend on our marine resource for everything, whether it's um, economic activities or for tourism and fisheries. We don't have anything without that. Many tourists come to visit the archipelago for the spectacular nature. So I realized it was important to conserve the ocean when um, growing up and understanding the relationship that the Seychelles what people have with the ocean, with the marine ecosystem and how much we rely on it. As a marine scientist, she's concerned about the growing pressure on the ecosystem. Experts go on regular dives to assess the conditions. Fishing, environmental pollution and tourism put strain on the Seychelles' unique underwater world. The coral reefs are suffering the effects of climate change because they are very sensitive to changes in water temperature. They provide a home for a whole host of marine life, from sea snails to sharks, so without them, biodiversity suffers. Reefs near the coast are especially vulnerable and they are the first ones to die. There has been a rise in ocean temperature and this has an impact on your corals because then this leads to coral bleaching and then you lose the corals because then you end up with dead corals. By the late 1990s, most coral reefs in the shallow waters had died. When coral bleached, you'll observe the white corals and once they're dead, they are usually taken over by turf algae. The resources that you had and the activities that you could carry out on a coral reef, then you've lost that. Now the government recently agreed to protect nearly a third of the country's marine waters within the next years as part of an initiative called the Seychelles Marine Spatial Plan. As a first step, the initiative is carrying out a survey of the underwater ecosystem. We carry out diving activities with the intent of collecting data on coral reefs to ensure that the management of protected areas in Seychelles is effective. In partnership with the Nature Conservancy NGO, the Seychelles Conservation Authority is hoping to understand exactly what's happening to the reefs. Coral reefs often have trouble regenerating in shallow water because the waves and currents are constantly moving the skeletons of the dead coral around, making it hard for new corals to settle. 
mapping the reef, you can see the changes. We have this very long period of time where the temperature is really high and the, the corals cannot recover. So this has a huge impact on your marine resource, on coral reefs. We have started a um, coral reef restoration project, looking at other ways to try and restore coral reefs using the corals that are more resilient and growing these corals and putting them back on the reef. Together with the fisheries and tourism companies, the country wants to find ways for everyone to use the sea sustainably, even outside the protection areas. The marine and spatial plan is the first of its kind in the Indian Ocean. It's very important that we constantly have this good, healthy coral cover. And I want everything that I do should make a difference and it should have an impact. I think it's a really wonderful feeling knowing that whatever information you bring back, it's going to contribute to the way we do conservation and that's going to have a positive impact on marine conservation in Seychelles. The project runs at least until 2020, by which time the first long-term protection plans should be in place. The ecosystem in the Seychelles is counting on it. What a beautiful place. Let's hope it stays that way. Now, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change recently published its latest assessment on the state of our oceans. And it wasn't good news. The same process that's happening on land is also happening at the sea. Yes, sadly, you're right, NT. We are being too careless with our aquatic ecosystems. The increased levels of carbon dioxide being absorbed by the water bodies have led to acidification. Coastal areas are being polluted or eroded. Marine life is disappearing. In a moment, we'll speak to an expert in Nigeria. But for now, here are a few raw facts in our new segment, Echo Check. The ocean is a place of many wonders. But now it's also a garbage dump. 8 million tons of plastic land in our oceans each year, about one garbage truck per minute. That's not only harmful to all sea life, but also to human beings. Climate killer carbon dioxide. Around 30% of greenhouse gases from human activities are absorbed by the ocean. That's roughly 1 million tons per hour. That helps to reduce the greenhouse effect. But the more CO2 the oceans and seas absorb, the more acidic they become. 40% of all coral reefs have perished in the last three decades. The oceans are getting warmer. Sea levels are rising. Between 2017 and 2018, they rose by 3.7 millimeters. It's the highest sea level rise in a single year and it's already enough to flood small island nations. It's pretty shocking, isn't it? The oceans have huge potential to adapt to change and even to compensate for it. But that can only work if we humans also play our part. My colleague Nt paid a visit to the Nigerian Institute for Oceanography and Marine Research in Lagos, where he spoke to Dr. Regina Folleronsho. The institute collects data and makes recommendations to the government on how best to protect the sea off Africa's coast. Dr. Folaruncho had some interesting things to say. Take a listen. Dr. Folaruncho, thank you so much for speaking with us on Eco Africa. Now, we've just heard a report about the horrible state of our oceans. You work with the Nigerian Institute for Oceanography and Marine Research. Can you tell us what exactly is the state of the oceans around the world now? Around the world, we can now consider the oceans as an ocean of plastics. When you take a, a sea cruise at the near shore environment, for example, as a fisherman, you will catch tons of plastics and very little fish. The fish are getting dead because they are ingesting plastics and they have a stomach full of plastics. What is the situation like in Nigeria? 
I mean, what can be done to clean up the plastic? You know, the polluters should pay. They should encourage people to come out for beach cleanups. There are also uh, domestic waste in our oceans. There are several things. The biodiversity is depleting. The mangrove vegetation is depleted. And uh, the state of our ocean is not so good. Do you think the government can do anything to help? I mean, some countries have banned use of single plastics. Yes, our government can help by uh, getting the, the, the salient groups of people to create the awareness of the damaging effects of single-use plastics. For example, cups, you know, plastic cups, straws, plastic bags, all those things should not be used. We should go back to what it used to be, you know, in the 50s, whereby we use uh, vegetative leaf to serve food, we use uh, cotton bags to shop. Those are things we ought to be doing to save the environment. Let's leave the plastics and look a little bit at the question of overfishing on the African, on the coast, Africa's coastal region. The mesh size for fishing, you know, tuna, should not be smaller than the specified mesh size. Because if your mesh sizes are smaller, then it means that you will take on board more fishes than just what you targeted. The federal government can help by having, you know, monitoring systems all over the coastline. Because we cannot share our fish resources with uh, people who do not come from Nigeria. You can't really discuss the environment in Nigeria without talking about the oil industry and its impact on the environment. Well, we have oil spills and these oil spills affect the fish resources because the juveniles cannot breathe when there is uh, oil on the surface of the water. So the juveniles die and then we have little uh, fish stock available for human consumption. This week is uh, the UN, the UN is talking about climate change and all of that. Do you think some of these matters need to be looked at more, more deeply than they are already being looked at? Oh yes, because we have to save our next generation. These are the resources we have to leave for them. So we have to look critically at the climate change issues, at pollution, at uh, single-use plastic, you know, being dumped anyhow. When you pollute, you must be sanctioned. You know, when we put some of these things in place, we will keep our environment safe for the next generation. Thank you very much, Mom. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So now we are a bit wise about the state of the world's oceans, but what about the lakes and the rivers, which make up a significant part of the water system in many countries? I hear things aren't much better, Sandra. Not if you talk to the people at the Danish initiative Green Kayak, but they are not just complaining about the state of Europe's rivers. They are taking action. They've come up with a pretty cool idea, as you'll see in this week's Doing Your Bit. Far too much waste ends up in rivers and lakes, especially in cities. That bothered Tobias Weber Andersen from Denmark so much that in 2017 he launched an initiative called Green Kayak. Paddlers can use boats for free in return for collecting any trash they find in the water. When you sit in the kayak, you get into the corners, you get into the dead ends. This is where you see the trash and you can see small, small bits of uh, plastics and things that doesn't belong in the water. Green Kayak now has support in five countries, including Germany. After reserving online, a boat, a bucket, and trash grabbers can be picked up at the dock of a cooperating boat rental. A few enjoyable hours on the water that benefit the environment too. And others are also getting on board. People are pretty conscientious these days. Almost everyone who rents a canoe, kayak or paddle boat picks up whatever trash they find along the way. Green kayak volunteers have collected over 21 tons of waste so far, and as word spreads via social media, the amount is sure to grow. And how about you? If you're also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories. Now that would be a good idea for our lagoon here in Lagos. We're going to stick with the subjects of rivers and visit one of Germany's biggest waterways now, the Rhine. 
Even major rivers are feeling the heat as climate change gathers pace. Right, NT, and what we tend to forget is that a river system like that one has provided a habitant and a source of water for people and nature for thousands of years. Here too, the ecosystem is fragile and needs protecting. So a water treatment plant on the Rhine purifies millions of liters of water every year. The Rhine is one of the most important rivers in Europe. It's 1,200 kilometers long, and over half of it flows through Germany. Scenic as it is, it's also a busy transport artery. Industry lines its banks, and much of its wastewater is discharged into the river. If it isn't cleaned first, the water is contaminated and can't be used for anything else. We're at the Rhine's sampling point. Close to the riverbank, the water is extracted from the river as it flows by. Then two transport pipes, each with a diameter over a meter, direct it to the waterworks. There, the water is intensively cleaned before being directed back into groundwater reserves via these shafts. The water treatment plant south of Frankfurt is the only one in Germany dedicated to processing river water. The infiltration process taking place in these tanks has a number of advantages. Historically, surface water hasn't been used for drinking water in Germany, mainly because the potential for a disaster on the Rhine is unavoidable, so we couldn't guarantee supplies around the clock. And there are also hygiene reasons. The infiltration process filters bacteria from the water, reducing if not actually completely removing the risk of contamination. In the summertime, the water in the Rhine can be as warm as 28 degrees. The infiltration ensures a temperature balance. So the top priority is maintaining groundwater levels, guaranteeing a clean water reservoir even in the event of extended drought. 43 million cubic meters of water per year are processed here at the main treatment facility in Biebersheim. The process is managed and monitored in a control center. You need to bear in mind that this solution is only possible thanks to local geological conditions. What we have here is a vast natural aquifer. You don't get them everywhere. Across eastern Germany, for example, there aren't any natural reservoirs. So this sort of solution wouldn't work there for geological reasons. Water from the Rhine flows into these basins and is purified using a specially developed process. Once the water has been mechanically purified in the untreated water pump station, the next step is flocculation. That's part of the chemical purification process. A flocculation agent is added so that flock forms, which is initially soluble, then is turned into sediment and floats to the top. The next step is to filter off the purified water. The facility was built 30 years ago. At the time, it was state-of-the-art. Today, it's been extended to be able to cope with the increasing contaminants in the Rhine. The water is examined for bacteria, heavy metals and pesticides here in the laboratory. In Germany, drinking and irrigation water must satisfy stringent quality standards that are based on specific microbiological parameters. The facility also provides clean water to farmers such as Hans-Jürgen Fischer for irrigation. The soil in the region suffers badly during heat waves. Lately, local farmers have needed to irrigate much more than usual to secure their harvests. Around 12% of the water purified in the facility is earmarked for farmers. It's essential. We grow onions, strawberries and a step is flocculation. That's part of the chemical purification process. A flocculation agent is added so that flock form. It's almost as clean as drinking water, and that means we can sell our strawberries directly. I can wholeheartedly vouch for our produce. Farmers pay between 30 and 50 cents per cubic meter for the irrigation water. Drinking water would cost 10 times as much, says Hans-Jürgen Fischer. Against a backdrop of climate change, clean water has grown more important than ever for the region. Back to Africa. Here in Uganda, but also in Tanzania and Kenya, 
fish stocks in Lake Victoria are being depleted. Pollution is partly to blame, as is overexploitation of natural resources. A project with partners from seven countries in Europe and Africa joined forces to tackle some of these problems. We went to the Ghanaian side of Lake Victoria to meet up with a team from the University of Karlsruhe in Germany. The scientists are here to hold workshops. Their goal is to boost fish stocks and also show the local communities how to preserve the environment. Muhammad Bakisula has been fishing off the Ugandan shores of Lake Victoria for more than 25 years. We no longer catch fish like we used to. It had a big economic impact on us. Right now, you can set traps and come up empty or get just one catch a week. In the old days, we would get a good catch every day. The main cause for the depletion of stocks is overfishing. Pollution from industrial activity is another problem. These issues have made it harder to meet the rising demand for fish. This has prompted some Ugandans to set up fish farms. One of the biggest challenges is the lack of clean, fresh water. Nulu Nakiwala runs a fish farm outside the capital, Kampala. If you're into fish farming, you have to keep flushing your ponds all the time. So you can imagine the amount of money that we spent just to make sure that we had water running into the different ponds. Every hour we're using 10,000 liters. She's taking part in a European Union-funded project called Vichinakwa. She and the other fish farmers are learning about a new technology. It was developed by a team of European and African scientists. The project is led by Professor Jan Hoikis from the University of Karlsruhe in Germany. The team has come up with a new system to reuse wastewater in order to cut costs while boosting efficiency. We uh, want to develop a system for the market, it's called uh, recirculating aquaculture. So this system makes use of 100% uh, water re reuse, water recirculation. So it's environmentally very friendly because there's no water going through and there's no, nothing spoiling the environment. And we make use of renewable energy in order to reduce the CO2 footprint. In the town of Kisumu, on the Kenyan side of the lake, a pilot project is already in place. The water is filtered using what's known as membrane bioreactor technology. Over in Uganda, Nakiwala has been using recycled water in her hatchery for the last 18 months. The used water is pumped into a tank. From there, it flows into these basins, which contain stones and sand that help clean the water. Now Nakiwala wants to use recycled water to her big ponds too. So we already have the system and it has proved to be very efficient for us using the same water. We maintain the same temperatures because that's also very crucial when you're hatching eggs into the indoor hatchery. So for the ponds, that is still work in progress for us to see how we'll be able to integrate it. The scientists would like more farmers to recycle water, ideally using renewable energy. The professor and his team have been working on this project for the last three years. So far, their work has brought them to Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania. We want to train, we want to show people and we want to see how uh, everything develops in future. And finally, very, very important is we need to uh, adapt this uh, solution for the local market. So at the moment we brought a lot of ideas from Europe and now we need the feedback of the local people uh, to give us a, a guidance in future how can we develop a low-cost system. One of the ways they are hoping to achieve that is by promoting exchange between scientists and farmers. The aim, establish best practices that both boost fish stocks and protect the environment. So what with acid seas? A dramatic decline in sea life oceans and waterways full of plastic and industrial waste. Surely it's time for all of us to do our bit and hopefully you know how you can do that. 
You've been watching a special edition of Echo Africa on aquatic ecosystems. It's time for me to say goodbye from Kampala here in Uganda. And goodbye from me in Lagos, Nigeria. You can find the show and further information on our website and social media platforms. And remember, our oceans and waterways are just as important for the planet as the land. See you next week. Bye-bye. No.